So I did my project on the efficacy of hedge apples or the fruit of the Leclerc palmifera tree, um, the efficacy of those as a pesticide. And to do that, I tested whether or not a hedge apple would affect the population of, a, of crickets. Um, so the I did kind of two different controls. I used a container of crickets that had no treatment applied, and I also compared it to an orchid home defense insecticide to see if it would be more or less effective than that. And I, ha I formed two hypotheses, hypotheses over this trial. My first hypothesis was that if you place a hedge apple preparation into a container of crickets, it will reduce the population of the crickets. Um, my first null hypothesis to go with that would be that the hedge apples would not reduce the population of crickets. Um, my second hypothesis was that the rate at which the crickets, the cricket population decreases would be similar to that of the organ home defense pesticide. Um, my second null hypothesis would also be that the rate is statistically significantly different than that of the head, the, between the hedge apples and the orchid pesticide. So for my tests, I separated 10 crickets from a main colony into different little totes. And then I added food and water gel into the totes in order to sustain the crickets over a period of one day which I took a data point at the end of a day to see how many were left alive, which is what is shown on my graph. So the I used three different preparations of hedge apples. I used a full hedge apple, um, quartered hedge apples, and dried and crushed hedge apples to test different ways of using the hedge apples. Um, so my data showed at the end of the day, I did three tests and my data for each one, the quartered hedge apples seemed to be the most effective of the hedge apple preparations, although it was all of them were much less effective than the orchid pesticide. Um, so, in conclusion, I will be supporting my first hypothesis and my second null hypothesis because the hedge apples did reduce the population at a slightly greater rate than the control did, but the rate was just statistically significantly different between the hedge apples and the orchid pesticides. A question for you, sir. How much time? Three forty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, originally I had wanted to do something with ants, but I was unable to because the time it would take to grow a full colony of ants um, would be too long for the time length of the project, so I decided to, I knew of the urban legend, Old Wives Tale, that hedge apples would work as an insecticide, and that's pretty much how I decided. Okay. <clears throat> so when you had your crickets separated into like a bunch of different containers with your hedge apples, was there food and like water in there with the crickets? Yes, there was. Okay. Another question, if you, if you don't mind. So you said you just had the whole hedge apple, quarter hedge apple, and then dried crushed? Yes. 
Yes. Do you, so what was your basis of having just those three? Because I was, I was thinking if it's a whole hedge apple and the old wife's tale is that if it's just the hedge apple that keeps them away, is it supposed to be like a air, a repellent like through the air or is it just like, is it a liquid in the hedge apple or what is it? Um, I was unsure because there hasn't really been any research conducted on it. Um, so I used the three different tests as to kind of cover my basis. Okay. So how did you apply the uh, purchased insecticide? Um, it was sprayed into the container and contacted all the crickets. Okay, so do you think that that introduces another variable if you sprayed it on some of them and the others you just had it in there? I think it could, but there wasn't really a good way to compare the two because I wanted to stay true to what I was testing with the old wives' tale in that it was just a hedge apple that kept them away. And what do your different uh, colors represent there? Um, it's so the blue is the first trial, the red is the second trial, and the yellow is the third trial. Okay, and so um, I can't see it from here, so I'm going to ask. So the first one is the whole hedge apple, the second one is the quarter, and the third one is the crush. crush. And then I assume that the black spot is the, the insecticide? Yes. And then the last one is your control? Yep. There doesn't appear to be a lot of difference between your control and the quarter and the crush. <coughs> from what I'm seeing there, right? Right. So what do you think that's indicative of? Um, it is kind of indicative, indicative that it might not work. And that's representing how many were alive or how many were dead? How many were alive. Oh, okay. Okay, and how many did you start with? Ten. In each container. And then what, what, uh, what is the left side of your graph doing? Your y-axis? Uh, the y-axis is the number of crickets remaining. The number remaining. So the, the live ones. What statistical analysis did you do to this? Uh, I used an ANOVA test. Okay, what was your p-value? Uh, it was almost zero. Okay, how about your f-critical? I can't remember off the top of my head what my f-critical was. Well, was it more than your, um, was your f-value more than the f-critical or no? Remember uh, that? I think so. Okay, your second hypothesis states that if hedge apples reduce the population, then it will be at a similar rate to a, a commercial pesticide. Okay, so your second null doesn't really agree with your second hypothesis. A null traditionally is just the opposite of your hypothesis. So if you have my uh, second hypothesis states that hedge apples reduce the population, then it will be at a similar rate to a commercial pesticide. So your null should be that if uh, hedge apples reduce the population, then it will not be at a similar rate to a commercial pesticide. You actually kind of have three hypotheses there, okay. is what you actually have. Uh, three hypotheses and then the first one. Uh, the first one was population that population will decrease. States the population will not decrease. Okay, so that one's fine. Yeah, I think I just. But I think your second, or excuse me, I think your your second null is actually a third hypothesis yeah, because it's I, a different idea. I worded that badly on the poster. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's I mean, it's a different idea that you're looking at. Okay. Other questions. Would it have been possible to use more than 10 crickets in a trial? Yeah, it would have. Okay. Was there any specific reasoning behind using this time? Uh, not really. 
So do you think observing for over a 24 hour span is enough to really draw a conclusion? Or should have you had maybe five to seven 24 hour spans for each one? Do you think that would be more significant? Uh, more tests would probably be more significant. Okay, what, what was the confidence level you tested at? Uh, 95%. You also like control. What was your control? Um, my control was just food and water gel in the container with the crickets. No other things introduced. So, to more crickets died, or, okay. So more crickets died in the control than No, the, the graph is the number remaining alive. Okay. All right, that makes sense. It might have been beneficial to, uh, would you try a graph of, of the ones that had died uh, versus the ones that remained? I didn't. That probably would also be a good thing to do. Yeah, I think that would I think that would give you a truer picture of what actually happened, perhaps. Because that's you're you're kind of looking to see, if I recall, you said you want to know if it was an effective insecticide. Yeah. So then you're gonna be looking at your death rate rather than remaining rate. And I'm just curious what that would do to your uh, aim over. That when you had another one? Yeah. Stephen? Uh, if you were to continue the project, how would you revise it to make it more accurate? Um, to make it more accurate, I would probably do more tests and try and devise a way in order to um, introduce all of the substances in the same way in order to remove another variable. Okay, and you said something about two controls. One was the insecticide, and yeah. one was, so you had a positive and a negative control. Kind. Which one's positive, which one's negative? Um, so, the, what do you mean by like positive and negative? Like Well, usually if you have more than one control, you designate one yeah. as positive and one as negative. Okay, um, I would say probably the, one that was no treatment would be the positive and the why um, I don't really know okay you might want to look that up yeah because you definitely have the two yeah but it would be good if you knew what they meant yeah is and if this is just a idiosyncrasy of mine. It's called Oregon Home Defense. Is yeah. defense spelled right? Yes. It shouldn't be S-E. D-E-F-E-N-S-E. F-C-E and S-E are basically interchangeable. One's a British spelling, oh. one's a U.S. Yeah, spelling. The, okay. the name on the model was S-E. It was SE rather than CE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I was looking up with Calvin the difference between British spelling and English spelling, and that's one of them. Okay. I don't know which is which off the top of my head, but. I think CE is the British. Okay. Probably. So, what, what were the ingredients in your pesticide? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, you should know that. Okay. Anytime you're using a product, uh, as part of your experiment, you should know what it's composed of. I know we ran into trouble with uh, nutrient auger. Uh, they would ask the kids, you know, what was in their nutrient auger. Well, we buy it prepared from from uh, Carolina, and Carolina won't tell you what's all in it. So all you can do is just, you know, Google nutrient auger and, and find out what sort of stuff is usually in it um, if you were going to mix it yourself. So, but it's always a good idea to know that. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Alrighty. 
Thank you.